Time to get a cup of tea, people. This one's going to be a long one, but an enjoyable one and a classic, nostalgic fast forward. Yep, it's an Escort. It's an RS Turbo convertible and it's in a bit of a state. You're going to enjoy this one. Bit of an old school transformation detail. Moldy, spider webs, grime, brake dust, fabric roofs that are heavily soiled. This one's got the lot. Buckle in, soak it up and enjoy it. As always, if you're not already subscribed, pause this video now, subscribe to the YouTube channel, bell notification, all of that, so you're not missing future content. Um, and if you want to see what I do on a more regular basis every week, head over to the Instagram page, which is at Joe Huntley Detailer, and there you'll be able to find my Instagram page and what I'm doing for a living. Have a nosy, let me know what you think. Anyway, on with this one. Um, Escort RS Turbo convertible, bit of a rare, bit of a rare old girl. Um, been locked away um, and let out the darkness wants to be sold um, customer didn't want to spend tons of money but what could be done for a set budget in a set time frame so kind of needed to focus on getting all of that sort of barn junk off it like I say it was a barn find it's been tucked away for ages it's been bird poo on it it's got grime and mildew everywhere so it was a case of actually this isn't going to be a machine polishing car and a ceramic coating car the budget didn't permit for that we need to clean it up we need to give the broad body work a brighten up and then address all of the surrounding areas just to enhance it to make it look as good as possible so when it's photographed to go up for sale it looks nice and pretty nice and honest and any prospective buyers could see what they're getting themselves into So I started off by blowing cobwebs away in the engine bay. Um, more than safe, as you are now witnessing. Um, pressure washed all of the, the grim areas down, trying to blow away the cobwebs and the crusty old leaves and all of that. Um, once I'd done that, come back in with some built hammer Surfex HD um, and then agitated away. You will find all of the links to what I'm using in the show more tab underneath this video. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments box. I'd like to go think they give you a bit of an honest view about how they work. Um, and then down there as well, there'll be a code. So when you go to ultimatefinish.co.uk, um, you've added what you like out of this video into your basket because you want to have a go yourself. Use code Joe 10 J O E 10 at checkout, um, and then that saves you 10% off your first order as well. So it's a win win. Um, you're seeing your products used, you're seeing what you're getting yourselves into, but also you're getting a bit of money off as well. Like I say, uh, in the engine bay, built hammer, Surfex HD, and some good agitation from some brushes. Now with everything rinsed off and the engine bay at a cleanliness level where I was happy, wasn't flawless but I was happy, um, all of the old rubbers, hoses, areas that needed dressing were given a right good soak in with auto finesse dressel and left to dwell and soak in and sort of really bring back some vibrancy. Now on to the next area that really needed tackling the roof it was green all over green in all the seams and then as you can see on the bottom right of the rear screen the driver's side of the rear screen it was absolutely caked it was thick you could literally pick it off um, I've done a comprehensive video about how to clean a fabric roof but again I'll talk you through it do not clean a fabric roof with a pressure washer with a normal nozzle on it. 
you'll leave tram lining all over that so low pressure rinse it come back in with some of that surfix hd again and some good quality brushes and then low pressure rinse it again it's a very enjoyable process um this roof was cleaned three times in a row to be able to get it to the point of there was no sort of staining left in it it's not a one hit wonder with a fabric roof take your time be patient and don't try and rush it when you try and rush it you won't get that consistent result you're looking for for the edges i used a swiss wax wheel brush to get into sort of the tighter crevices and then for the bulk of the roof just a vicam brush um, any stiff interior brush will do this and as you can see the gunk that came out was quite impressive Now, like I say, that was it done once. The roof was hit three times over. I wasn't going to show you it all three times around, so I stuck a GoPro up, time-lapsed it, but it gives you a good idea of how I'm doing it, what my processes are to be able to achieve the roof getting back to that black luster that it actually needed. Again, time-consuming process. Take your time, enjoy it. It's a good transformation to get. And at this point now, someone actually pulled up was chuffed to see the car and wanted to know more so i spent a bit of time with a guy and he's actually interested in buying it so that's a win-win with roof now complete onto the wheels not the standard wheels but i kind of liked them um not horrific i'm not going to milk that they are but standard wheel cleaning process with a good selection of brushes um and i use the ultimate finish uh fallout uh, an iron remover on this um, through an auto finesse pro bottle buying this stuff in five liters because i just go through this on a daily basis if you want to learn more about this product there'll be a link up on the screen um, recent video i've done shows you the ins and outs of the product why you need to use it and where you can and can't use it again surfex hd for tires and arches you're now seeing how much i use that product on a day-to-day -day basis and how integral it is to all of my cleaning routines very very useful Now with the wheel rinsed off, the classic trick, some more finesse aqua coat, 
and a good rinse down um, quick way of sealing them wheels so they're brighter more hydrophobic and easier to clean next time round so it's an easy win that one with the engine bay the fabric roof and the wheels now looking clean it's on to the main event the bodywork um, took my time with this one and just spent a good sort of five ten minutes with the pressure washer going around all of the cracks to crevices trying to blow out as much mold grime built up dirt that I could um, there was moss in places that was quite impressive um, but again just using the pressure or the pressure washer just to be able to blow out as much as I could I'd then come back in with a snow foam let the snow foam sit for a little while and then I would then come back in with a brush and agitate all of the tighter areas on this car it was around the bumpers um, and also around the window surrounds things like that those areas that you saw in them opening shots where it was holding all of that green gunk and grime they were agitated with a brush after that again just a thorough rinse down to try and make the car as clean as possible before that contact wash For the contact wash, two bucket wash method. Um, there's a lot of controversy around this at the moment, but I'm sticking to what I know and I'm quite happy doing it. So you keep your one bucket. Um, microfiber mitt was used on the fabric roof just to neutralize any last cleaners that might be there. Lamp tool wasn't used. Sometimes it grabs and holds the fiber of the lamp tool and you get that sort of um, fibers left over bit unsightly so microfiber used there lamb tool on the bodywork um, straight lines my normal approach was used however obviously because of the swirling and that of the paintwork it wasn't absolutely necessarily but for good practice I like to remain what I do all the time on every car I wash doesn't matter what it is it gets the same treatment that way it's my fail safe I know what I'm doing Now, during the wash process, um, I actually felt the paintwork and it felt horrific. It's not an understatement, it was disgusting. Car was rinsed down, and then with my bucket of shampoo, so ultimate finish pure shampoo, and an auto finesse clay bar, I come back in and clay barred the whole car. It was that bad, it took me about 45 minutes to clay bar this car. 
but you will see the state of the clay bar after I've done this one section. It was horrific. That bad to the point of the half a clay bar I used on this car, I just binned it afterwards. It was that contaminated, I didn't want to use it on anything else. Pure, pure filth. Like a disgusting burnt marshmallow. But still, with that clay bar on the bin, anyway. Um, car was then dried down. Um, nothing crazy. Standard dry and towel. Um, car's dried down. Blown drying. Taken inside because the weather was horrific on this day. And I had the fortunate um, chance of using a unit. So, car was taken inside. Ready to sort of brighten up all of the rest of the car. And what we could do with a remaining half a day that we had left. Now, like I say, we're working on a budget and a time constraint. I would have loved to spend three, four, five days on this car and gone to town on it. But we have to be sensible and work with other people's budgets and time frames and what they want to achieve. So hand polishing was in order of the day here. A uh, microfiber block, some auto finesse triple, a pair of headphones in and just went round the car and enjoyed it nothing much to about this product it is simple it does what it says on the tin it really brightened up the paintwork it cleaned it a bit as well um, and left the paint ready for a layer of wax really intensifying the depth of the black paint on this escort Now the whole car had been gone around, clean, fresh microfiber cloth was taken to remove any excess. And now as long as you don't apply too much polish, it will come off a treat. This shouldn't be chalky, it shouldn't be hazy, it shouldn't be cloudy. You should just be left with clean, crisp reflections. Easy to say for you with our lisp. The triple and the microfiber block was also implemented on any black painted areas in the engine bay. Again, just to brighten it up. I'm not going for show winning clean here. We're talking about cleaning this car up. And it was a simple and effective way to brighten that last touch up on that engine bay.
coming up to the end of May, nearly June in England. This is the hell it's going to be. the hell? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to the detailing. Bodywork was polished, can't forget the glass. Loads of contamination sticks to glass, so auto finesse vision, again, microfiber applicator block, not too much product, and just work it in. One of the only times I tend to use circles is on glass. Um, work it in, buff it off it is as simple as that. There's no glass cleaner used here to employ to get it off, it come off that easy. Um, now going down with a nostalgic theme, I don't normally like shiny tires, but oh, this car kind of needed it. So Meguiar's endurance gel was used here um, and it really, really worked well on the car. It was that era of car when shiny tires was a thing. Um, if you're looking for a durable shiny tire dressing, do not get me wrong, this is market leader. And on this car, it worked an absolute dream. Um, and a little top tip with this, it can be used as a sort of a restoration sort of oil for your trims as well. So wiper arms and a few other little trims were done to restore on this. Obviously being oil based, make sure you give it a buff off once you've applied it. But as you can see, it really did revive these wiper arms nice and easy. Another small detail on a car, exhaust tip. However, on this car, it wasn't such small detail. It was pretty mammoth. Um, mercury metal polish and just some good old-fashioned elbow grease. Here, I've done the tip um, later on, sort of lied under the car and did sort of the back box and the pipe leading backwards and everything you can see from the ground. Again, these little sort of 1-2% jobs, same with the wiper arms, these sort of all add up to give you an overall better detail. Now with all of the little detailing jobs out of the way, it's, it's that crown and glory moment that the icing on the cake, a nice layer of wax. Um, Illusion show car wax was used here. Really oily, really easy to use. Doesn't cost the earth. It might be more than your 20 quid, but it's worth it. Um, super easy to use. And it was great on this car because where it sat in a barn and accumulated all of that dirt, the paint was really starting to dry out. So those oils were sinking into the paint, really hydrating it. Um, and also adding protection at the same time. And like I say, because of how oily Illusion Show Wax is, you can do the whole car, come back, buff it off. You could do a panel at a time. It's a very flexible wax and it allows you to work the way that you want to work. But what it will do is intensify and enrich the look of the paintwork. And you truly see that in them finished shots.
from barn to showroom ready in one day. There you have it. Like I say, this isn't the biggest correction detail you'll ever watch. Just a really satisfying, clean and realistic to what you can achieve at home. And I think you'd agree with me that this car is 10 times cleaner than when I started the day. Um, again, all of the products that I've used will be linked in the description below. If you've got questions about using the products or unsure, drop a comment. If you've enjoyed the video, like it. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Again, use code JOE10 at checkout. Um, get over there, send them some love because you want your car to shine like this one, trust me. Um, like I say, this car's going up for sale. So if you're in the area of London and North London, you want to buy one, drop me a message. If not, follow me on Instagram and I'm going to see you next time for some more car cleaning fun. Thank you for watching.